And now, welcome Mark Leibovich, author of Big Game, The NFL in Dangerous Times, and Demora Smith, Executive Director of the National Football League Players Association. They're here with the Atlantic's Jillian White. Good to see you, man. All right. Talked about a lot of important stuff this morning, a lot of heavy stuff, so now we're going to talk about something that's completely non-controversial, the <laughs> NFL. So, it's just, a, just another quiet day at the office yep, today. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so I guess the way that I would start this is, you know, before if we had a sports panel, if we were up here talking about football, it would be fun, mostly lighthearted. Is there still joy in football, in American football, do you guys think? Yeah, I think, I think there is. I think that's its saving grace. I mean, I, unfortunately, it's muddled with a lot of non-joyous and very complicated things that makes it hard to escape into football, which is what the NFL would like everyone to be able to do. I mean, I, so I've been on this tour, we're talking about my book, and there's been a lot of football questions, there's been a lot of questions about uh, gloom and doom and all the you know, things we're going to be talking about today, but ultimately, there is... Uh, wow, wait, this is going to go south. This is, this is good. <laughs> God, that was one of my favorite wow. laugh lines already. Ooh, yeah, wow. I nailed that one. <laughs> yeah, um, stand-up guy. No, but like, like week two, uh, Vontae Davis of the Buffalo Bills retires at halftime. It's all anyone wanted to talk about at some reading. Um, yeah. week, I did a reading in Boston last week, and it was a Thursday night, and I said, uh, hey, thanks everyone for coming out and uh, skipping the Cleveland Browns-New York Jets game. It was like a whole laugh line because they're really bad teams. All of a sudden, I go back to my hotel, the Browns win. It's all anyone's talking about the next yeah. day. It, there was joy there, but I, I mean, obviously. I, I, I guess where I would come in on this, and, and I hate to sound esoteric, but yeah. that's what you get with a philosophy major. Um, <laughs> you know, what's football? Mm -hmm. So I, I refuse to believe that there's any gloom and doom about football because I know football is being played on Friday nights in small towns. It's being played on Saturdays with colleges. Uh, it's being played on Sundays um, um, in the pros. And, and there's also, you know, multiple levels of that. Uh, I just flew in this morning from a team meeting with the Houston Texans. Are those guys enjoying football? Yes. Right. Um, are there big issues that we have to deal with? Uh, health, safety, financial, economic, yeah. salary cap, CBA, all those you know, scintillating issues? Yes. But um, you know, to your point, you watch Baker Mayfield light it up. Yeah. Um, one night it's fun. But um, you know, every now and then we have to... We stay in the business of football, and sometimes that's not so much fun. My, yeah. my takeaway on this, and I suspect Dee would agree with me, is that football you know, is successful and probably will be successful because of the glory and the beauty of the game itself, but despite a lot of the people who run and own it. Yeah, I think one of the things that's happening. <laughs> one of the things that's happening. Present now, company, though, not a Yeah, no. You, I don't. I don't, don't own the game. You don't own. I don't own, own, and I don't have a jet right. uh, to my own. But. You mentioned, you know, football still being played. Uh, you know, tag football, recreational, people yes. are still playing it in high school. But there are a lot of schools, there are a lot of school districts that are now kind of terrified about the risk factors. Yep. They're terrified of being implicated in something that could not be safe. I'm wondering if you think the league is doing enough to address some of those safety concerns. Um, well, I, the, the North Star for the union is that we will never be at a place where we believe we've achieved nirvana on health and safety. Mm -hmm. So my job as the head of the union is to hold the employer accountable to provide as safe a workplace as possible. So, I mean, it's a little bit of a loaded question. Um, do I ever think that the league is doing enough? That answer always has to be no. Um, so, you know, we do things on, on our own to push uh, the league in, in the direction that we think uh, that they should go. For the most part, um, there's always been pushback, but we've been successful in pushing um, closer and closer to that, that, that paradigm of, of a healthier sport. But at the end of the day, um, there are certain risks that are inherent in the sport. And, and for me, again, from a union standpoint, I really I don't want to sound boring, but I approach it the same way that I would expect a union leader who represents coal miners or firefighters or police officers, you think about it exactly the same way. What can we do tomorrow to make this job safer than the day before? Are players actively scared? Um, well, the other thing I would always say is there's a roughly about 1,900 of them, mm -hmm. so I never make right. generalizations. Um, when you say scared, do I think that players have a uh, far more uh, realistic understanding of the risk? Um, yes, and, and I think that um, they should. And, and we don't shy away from telling the truth 
about the risk in the sport. I think that when a player decides that he wants to retire because he has decided that he has reached that point in, in the health and safety um, evaluation or equation that he's, he's done, that he's better off leaving, that's what I would want. I mean, is there anybody who wouldn't want that for their son? Right. So, um, do I think they're scared? I can't answer that question. Do I think that they are far more informed? Um, yes. Okay. I, I mean, I would say that in, in people I've talked to in reporting this book, I mean, there are many layers of fear. I mean, a lot of people are scared of losing their jobs. A lot of people mm -hmm. are scared of displeasing their position coach or their teammates or, you know, raising the ire of, of the fans. So, I mean, you know, th again, there are many different levels of, of fear here, but ultimately, I mean, the, the existential issues of player safety, I mean, th I think awareness is our friend here yeah. and their friend. Yeah. So you mentioned the idea of players losing their jobs. I feel like that's kind of a good segue into talking about the issue with the national anthem and kind of where what, that what stands. What issues? <laughs> yeah, what are we talking about here? Well, did, did, did I miss something? Yeah, nothing, yeah. So, DeMorris, I just want to know, from the player's perspective, um, what is the <laughs> issue with the anthem and how do you think that's going? Well, we approached the anthem issue as a, a free speech issue. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, you know, certainly, you know, given the, the you know, what I relate to, whether it's the, the civil rights movement or, or the labor movement, um, all of those things are inextricably tied to a worker's ability to, to use their voice. And, um, you know, when the league uh, imposed their rule unilaterally, um, we made the only decision that I think a union can make. I think that we don't need a rule. I think that what the league has done to um, 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 agree with us on this standstill is a, is a good thing and a positive thing. You know, you talk about what does football mean existentially. Um, every now and then I think, um, and this might sound like sacrilege, that, that there are things in the world that, that are actually bigger than football. <laughs> Um, we won't tell and, anyone. Uh, I know, um, uh, but there are. And if, and if the NFL can actually end up being um, an example of where you allow and encourage um, people to talk about issues openly, um, to take stands um, um, about issues that happen in their community, I think that's a great thing, mm -hmm. and, and I rarely say a lot of nice things about the National Football League, but um, I would say that on this one, um, they got it right with respect to um, backing off the, the, the imposition of the rule. Yeah. But, but isn't, aren't, isn't there effectively a rule that you are, I mean, you are, I guess, technically allowed to protest or kneel during the National Anthem now because you're basically making a terrible career decision. I mean, there are a lot of teams and owners are going to be far less likely. Yeah, I'm but that's not a so. rule. I no, mean, I realize would, it's not a rule. Well, but then you can't call it one. So I would call it something similar to a rule that is affecting the behavior <laughs> well, well, of wait, a lot of if, people. If, no. if any person, when you, you think about, you know, and there was a great article, and I would urge everybody to read the recent article in SI about John Carlos and, and, and Tommy Smith. You know, did they suffer repercussions for what, right. what they did? Right. You know, there is never a time in our history where, where the advancement of, of rights didn't come with some sort of sacrifice. Right. And, and so I, I, the, reason, the only reason why I chafe about the use of the word rule is when people take stands like that in history, there are always repercussions. Right. And, and I wish there weren't, mm -hmm. but if someone doesn't decide, if someone decides you know, um, that she's not gonna get up from the bus or if people before me didn't decide that, that they were going to sit at a lunch counter, if people didn't decide that they were going to get on a freedom bus uh, that was attacked, um, we do not make progress. And so, um, yes. So, Mark, you've studied the history of this, even following this for a long time. Do you think that the NFL, that players are more political now than they have been in a long time? Or do you think that it's just way more visible in this particular moment? I mean, I, I think it's been made visible by, you know, the actions of, I mean, I think it's, it's there. I think we are living in a very political time. I think there's been an incredible vacuum of leadership from, you know, many levels of the game, you know, especially ownership and the commissioner, in that there's been a vacuum filled by the likes of, of Donald Trump. There's been a vacuum filled by the likes of Colin Kaepernick. I mean, obviously very different ends of the spectrum, but they have brought, you know, the very divisive, 
very, very emotional politics, and, and in some ways, I think, in the case of some politicians, opportunistic politics into you know the forefront of the game. But um, look, I, I think in many ways, political activism, as it were, has been forced upon a lot of people who just want to be thinking about football. Um, you know, whether that's a player or a coach or a fan or, mm -hmm. or what have you. So. Um, in so much as there have been people responsive and vocal and, you know, in the face of that, I think that makes it a more political time in the league. I'm not sure, you know, apples to apples, if you compare this to like the 80s or the 90s, you'd find that much of a difference in, in the profile of population. Yeah. yeah, I mean, one of the first players to, to protest during the anthem was a player named Dave Megacy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and look, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that um, we are, uh, thankfully, and in some ways, blessedly, in a time where people feel like they have to make individual choices to become more political, and I think that's a good thing. And, and the fact that we, the NFL, are actually the, the major league um, without a rule, mm -hmm. to me, is interesting. Um, there's a rule in every other league now except yeah. ours. And, and do I think that our men have uh, demonstrated a tremendous amount of, of, of courage? Uh, yes. Um, and again, at the risk of being struck by lightning, um, um, do I think that Roger um, uh, has done an, a, a very good job with respect to where we've come since we decided um, on the standstill? Um, yes. I think that you've seen teams engaged in social justice issues where they never have before. Right. And that's a great thing for our community, and I think that's a fantastic um, thing for our country. Yeah. The NFL has kind of become a lightning rod for Trump in particular, not just on the issue of the anthem, though that he's been very vocal about that, but also on lots of other issues. He kind of centers in on the NFL and kind of uses it to make points. I'm wondering, why do you think that is? Well, in the president's case, there's obviously a lot of personal history, a lot of personal grievance with his inability to buy an NFL team through various means over several decades. So, no, I mean, this is quite clearly, I mean, I don't think this is a particularly controversial statement. I mean, I think it's driven by a great deal of personal, uh, I mean, grievance in, in some ways. And I think it's a very, you know, it's a very hot political issue for him. He believes that his base loves him going after football players. He believes that the majority of the population or a winning you know, number of the population are, you know, think that like the president should be speaking out on players not, you know, kneeling during the national anthem. So, I mean, I think it's, I don't think it's that complicated, but look, he gets to be right in the middle of the great spectacle of American life, which is football, which for years has been really the only rival to politics as far as like the great reality show that Donald Trump, you know, gets to be right in the middle of. So in a way it's perfect for him. Yeah. So in 10 years, is the NFL still around and is it fundamentally different than it is today? And Morris, let's start with you. Um, in 10 years, yes, it's still around. Do I hope that it's fundamentally different? Always. Yeah. Mark, what do you think? I, I think it will be still around. I think it needs to be changing and, and maybe more accelerating the, the pace of change in order to, um, I think, keep up with, with a pace of sort of cultural awareness that I don't know if it's fully aware exists. Gentlemen, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Awesome. Wow. Thank you. Thank you.